this lecture is um, Telephone Communications in a Professional Setting. And communication is one of the key things that has to happen in any type of professional setting, be it medical, be it corporate, anywhere. Communication is key, okay? So with that, um, I'm going to talk to you a little bit about communicating, all right? Mm -hmm. And communication goes two ways. And you have a sender and you have a receiver. Now, sometimes you may be the sender and sometimes you have to be the receiver in communicating with other people, okay? What the sender does is they deliver the message. Generally, if it's telephone, it's going to be by speaking or talking. There are actually different types of communication. There's verbal and then there's nonverbal communication. We're not going to get into that in this lecture, but we will get into it more in other lectures, okay? But the type of communication that we're going to be talking about is verbal, okay? Because with telephone techniques, you're using the phone and you're talking to people, so that's yeah. verbal, okay? Um, now, the sender is going to give out information. So, when you're working in a medical practice, the first thing that you do when you answer the phone is you greet the person by saying hello. And hello is actually like a buffer word. A buffer word is a word that is used and it really doesn't make a difference if the people hear it or not, but it just helps them to know that, okay, hello, that's a nice greeting, okay? So buffer words aren't that important. But it comes before the words that you really want to get across. And the information that you really want to get across to the person on the other end of the phone is your name and the practice name, where they're calling, okay? So you might say something like, hello, this is Stephanie, and this is Dr. Kennedy's office. How may I help you today, okay? So you're giving them information. You're giving them information on who they're speaking with, you're giving them information on where they have called, and then you're asking them for information, how may I help you? Now, once you ask them for information, you then become the receiver, all right? And what does the receiver have to do? The receiver has to listen, okay? They have to listen and decode the information that the other person is giving them, okay? So, the receiver listens to the patient or the person on the other end of the phone. Now, in listening, you have to give your undivided attention, okay? Now, as you listen to the patient, you're gathering the information that they want to get from you, and then you become the sender again. Now, the sender, again, is giving information. These people on the other line want the information. So they send to you the message of what it is they want. You have to listen very carefully. And then even in listening, there is a, a way of listening that's called active listening, okay? And with active listening, what you're doing is you're repeating to them what they said to you to make sure that you understood what they said. Mm -hmm. And the same thing happens with the other person. They will repeat to you what you said to make sure that the same message was given, okay? Now, again, you're the sender of important information about the medical practice, all right? And because you are the sender of important information, guess what? You have to know the information. So, in working in any medical facility, and this is good for corporate too, if you're on the phones, you got to know about the place where you're working. So, these are some tips, okay, free tips for you that I'm not charging you for that will help you in telephone communications wherever you go, okay? The first thing is be informed. Be prepared. How do you be prepared? Well, the way to be prepared is to know the information about the facility you're working in. Okay? If you're in a medical practice, get every brochure that you can find and read up on it. And you can even use a little cheat sheet. Get your little card and put it right above you 
so that if someone asks you a question, you know right where to go to find the information. It's not always how much you keep up here, but it's knowing where to go to get the information and having it handy for you, okay? Now, another thing when you're on the telephone is you have to have the supplies that you need readily available. And what are these supplies? Message there. Pencil. Have you ever called the doctor's office and they said, oh, hold on just a minute, I can't find my pencil. Somebody walked away with it. Is that not irritating? Is that professional? No. That is not professional at all, is it? Okay, so, can I have your message pad, your pencil or pen or writing utensil, and appointment book? Because many times, people who are calling into a medical practice will make an appointment, all right? So, for those people to make an appointment, they have to feel good about you, the person who is um, actually on the phones giving them the information. So for them to feel good about you, first of all, you have to be prepared, but you also have to be confident in yourself. And the way that you're confident goes right back to being informed because you are the expert on this practice. That's what they're thinking and that's what you have to convey to them, okay? Another thing is if you're confident, you sit a new way. Have good posture, okay? Also, you want to be polite. And how do you be polite? You think about the other person on the other end. I mean, you wouldn't want to talk about No, how are you doing? Okay? All of that comes in with your telephone voice, okay? The tone, all right? You can have a good tone or a nice tone or you can talk. They're going to get distracted by the way that you sound, right? right? Okay? So you want to have a professional telephone voice, all right? You want to have a tone that is inviting for the person or makes the person comfortable talking to you, okay? Uh, your volume. You don't want to talk so low that the person can't hear. And you don't want to be so loud that they say, oh, who is this, okay? So you want to have the right volume when you're speaking on the phone. Clarity. We don't use slangs in a professional setting, okay? Don't say my bad, all right? You are going to say things like, uh, you'll be very clear in what you're saying. Not like, you know, you know, we, we use those types of um, uh, stuttering type of things. Well, you know what I mean, you know, you know. Don't use that, just use straight English, okay? Uh, English from the dictionary, all right? And you'll be fine there. All right, now, also, with the rate of speed that you speak. Now, in Philadelphia, people speak a lot faster than they do in North Carolina or South Carolina or in the southern states. Mm -hmm. So, depending upon where you are, the rate or speed that you talk will determine whether people can understand you. If you're originally from the north, you're going to have to slow down some in the south. If you're originally from the south, Try to speed up in the north or they'll think you're not very intelligent because not that you're not, it's just that that's what they think about people who speak slowly. And I'm not from the north, but I know how they look at us. So, anyway, the next thing, you're going to have your message pad. To take a message, you must listen to what they're saying. And you must repeat it. Okay? So now, what is the key? to telephone communication. The two keys or the two nuggets or the two secrets are number one, knowing the information or being prepared or becoming the expert on the place where you're answering the phone for. And number two is being a good listener and having your supplies at hand so that you can take the message without a problem. Okay? And this concludes our nuggets for today.